welcome to exam assure today we will be discussing about the important points to remember from the national building code 2016 for gate architecture and planning 2022 exam so firstly we will discuss part 3 of the nbc which talks about the development control rules and general building requirements so first and foremost the most uh, important thing from this section is going through the terminology for example let us take the example of the carpet area now if you see as per the national building code carpet area is defined as the covered area for of the usable rooms at any floor level and if we see the questions from previous year gate we have a question from gate 2013 for one mark where it is asked that in case of residential apartments the effective floor area available for use within an apartment is known as so here it talks about the same thing that is carpet area but only the language is changed a little bit but the crux or the meaning is the same so here the answer in this case will also be the carpet area now secondly another very important uh, part from part 3 is knowing the requirements of parts of building that is part 12 under uh, part 3 section 12 under part 3 where uh, various kinds of uh, definitions or sizes requirements are asked not only in gate but also in other government exams related to architecture and planning so for example uh, let us take the size of a habitable room now as per nbc it is said that the area of a habitable room shall not be less than 9.5 square meters and if there is one room the minimum width should be 2.4 meters and in case if there are two rooms one of the rooms shall not be less than 9.5 square meters and the other one should not be less than 7.5 square meters so if you see that if there is only one room the area should be 9.5 square meters and minimum width should be 2.4 meters and in case if there are two rooms so one room has to be of 9.5 square meters and the second room can be of 7.5 square meters with a minimum width of 2.1 meter is what the table says now let us look at the question so again we have another question from 2013 for one mark where it says that as per the national building code the minimum size of a habitable room in square meter is so here they are asking about a habitable room that means only one habitable room so in this case the answer will be 9.5 square meters now this question has also been asked previously in a uh, gate of course but along with that it has also been asked in isro exams as well as exams conducted by hardco so this is a question which is very commonly asked in various exams related to architecture and planning then from the point of universal design it is important to know some certain terminologies with respect to universal design and barrier free design so let us take a look at the question here it says that tactical flooring with guiding blocks is an which is an element of barrier free design is used to aid what so here it is either the options given are ambulant disabled non ambulant disabled partially sighted and totally blind so in this case if you go through these definitions or the write up that is given in nbc it will be very easy for you to answer so in this case your answer is c that is partially sighted or totally blind along with this 
in NBC, they have also given images about what are the different types of uh, elements or components used in barrier-free design. For example, relating to this question, there are images given for what are guiding blocks, what are warning blocks, etc. So this is another important component that one should know. Along with uh, NBC, and from the gate exam perspective, one should also go through the CPWD barrier-free design. Barrier-free design guidelines. These are also important because many are times in gate, uh, the question that is asked with respect to universal design as well is in reference to the CPWD barrier-free design guidelines also. So it is important to go through these guidelines as well. Now, another important part is the widths or the minimum clear distances that are required. So for example, here we have a part where uh, the minimum clear width of staircases is mentioned in a table. So here you have residential where uh, depending upon different types of residential, the width that is required is from 0.7 to 1.25. That is the minimum width, not the maximum. Okay. Then you have educational institutes where the width minimum width required is 1.5 meters. For institutional, you have minimum width of two meters that is required for the staircase and the other kinds of occupancies other than residential, educational uh, and institutional, you will have a requirement of minimum staircase width of 1.5 meters. So uh, looking at a question from 2014, it says that as per the national building code, the minimum width in meters of a staircase flight in an educational building above 24 meter height should be. So in this case, here the height is given to probably confuse the candidate who's giving the exam. But here, what you need to focus on is the minimum width and the type of building. Okay, the minimum width of staircase and the type of building, which is educational building. So now if you look at the table, here you can easily get your answer. What, that is B, 1.5 meters. Then another part from the National Building Code, which is important, is the fire and life safety, which is part four. So from this part, one important question that I will be discussing is the uh, number of exits and the arrangement of exits, which is again asked in multiple exams. So I'll be only discussing this question. So if you see, uh, this is an important uh, section from that part. Now, one of the points, important points from this is point C, where it talks about the dead end corridor length in an exit axis shall not exceed six meter for educational, institutional and assembly occupancies. And for the other occupancies, the same shall be 15 meters. So in case if it is a educational, that is a school, college, or institutional building, or assembly building, like a convention center probably. So in those cases, if this is your dead end, from the dead end, the exit that will be here, shall be at a distance of maximum six meters, not more than six meters away from the dead end, is what it says for these three occupancies, that is educational, institutional, and assembly buildings. And in case of other occupancies or other building uses, the distance can be maximum up to 15 meters. 
So if you look at the question from 2015, it says as per the N fire safety norms of NBC India for buildings having assembly and institutional occupancy, the maximum travel distance in meters from the exit to the dead end of the corridor is. So if you just go through this, you can easily get your answer. That is six meters. So now this kind of question has also been again asked in other government exams like ISRO. Now just to summarize the whole thing, uh, we've put up a table as to what topics and what page number from which part of the NBC are important for one to go through. So in part three, you have the terminology, the land use classification, uh, transferable development rights, the requirements of parts of building, requirements for accessibility in built environment for elders and persons with disabilities, and a few other important annexes, that is annex B, C, and E, are also important from part three of the National Building Code. And from part four, uh, it is the terminology is what is very important for one to go through. And secondly is the egress components. From this, we've just discussed uh, about the distance from the dead end corridor. That is what the egress components talks about. So uh, we've also added a highlighted PDF of the important points that have been mentioned in these tables in the link given below in the description. So you can click on the link given in the description and download the same. Thank you.